Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very last section of Chapter 3, Section 3.4, Systems of Equations in Three Variables. But first, before we get to three variables, we're going to talk a little bit about two variables. Now, two variable, or a system with two variables, like an x and a y here, would give us a coordinate plane, right? They would give us lines. A system with two variables would give us lines. But now with a system with three variables, and it's going to look a lot like this, x, y, and z, that's how our answers are going to be today, would give us three-dimensional shapes like this. They would be in planes. So a system with three variables, we are now talking about planes. We're not, no longer talking about lines with three variables. We're talking about planes. And now I can't take credit for this beautiful picture. I took this from the math warehouse. And so this is their beautiful diagram. When you have infinite solutions, this is what their planes would look like. When you have one solution, look something like this, and no solution, solutions, all the planes are parallel to each other. So what do these problems look like? They will look like this. At least one equation will have three variables in it, making it a system of equations with three variables. Now, when we first start this, we want to look at some single variables. We want to find an equation with a single variable in it so that we can match it to the other two equations because our goal right now is to cancel out one variable. So now if I look at this guy, if I look at the red guy, I see that I have a negative z, right? I like that single lone negative z. I'm going to try to manipulate this red equation to match make this z match up with this z so then when I add the systems together they're going to cancel cancel out I'm going to get rid of this z so what I'm going to do to this red equation right now is take it times 2 so I'm taking this whole red thing times 2 so what I'm going to have now is I'm going to take this black equation and then I'm going to add a 2 times the red equation. And to save you guys some headaches, I have this stuff all typed out. So if I start moving too fast during the lesson, feel free to pause it, write down everything that you need to write down, and we'll be fine. So now again, I have the black equation from above, and I took 2 times this red equation to get 4x plus 2y minus 2z equaling 10, right? And why did I take it times 2? Now, if I add these together, right, we're always not going to add. We could add or subtract. But when I add these together, I'm going to get 9x plus 5y. And now what happens to my z's? 2z minus 2z. That cancels out. And then I'm left with 12, all right? That's why we added there. Again, we're not going to not going to always add we may subtract we may add it always depends on what you need all right so now we have one equation with just two variables now we need another one so now I'm going to use this purple line and see how I can get rid of one variable since we got rid of the Z let's try to get rid of the Z again well now I'm gonna take the purple equation and I'm going to add what to it? Well, here I have a 2z, right? So if I multiply this equation again by 2, so again, I'm going to take this equation by 2 and take it times this guy, I will cancel out these z's. So let's try it. Here again, I have the purple equation written down just as is. I took 2 times the red equation to get this. Now let's add these together. Once again, you won't always add, but in this case you are. So it's going to be 5x plus 6y. We have 2z minus 2z. That cancels out. Then equals 26. And now we have two equations with two variables. Now we know how to solve this. We can solve now, start solving for variables. And I'm going to move on to the next page, just the have more room. So these are the equations that I had. Now what do we have to do? We have to get these guys, these numbers being the same because I want to use elimination. 
So what do I have to multiply these guys by? I'm going to look at my y's just because I like dealing with fives. So I'm going to look at my y's. I'm going to multiply the blue guy. I'm going to take the whole thing times six to make my y's match up. And if I multiply this guy by six, what do I have to multiply the green one by? I'm going to multiply the green guy by a negative five. So when I do that, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get 54 plus 30y equals 72. And then I multiplied it by a negative 5, so my y's would be exactly the opposite. And so now, when I add them together, I get 29x. And then I add my y's together to get 0, so they cancel each other out. And that equals a negative 58. Then I can divide by 29, and so x equals a negative 2. All right, that's a lot of work to find one answer, but we're not quite done. We still have to solve for y. Well, you can use these equations, all right? You can still use these equations. You can use the top one, you can use the green one, or you can use these equations over here. I'm just going to go ahead and use this bottom one. All right, I just picked it. You can use any of those four, but I'm going to use the bottom one. So now I have to solve for y, so it's going to be negative 25 times a negative 2. Then I close that up, minus 30y equals negative 130. I'm solving for y. Here we go. We have neg er, positive 50 minus 30y equals negative 130. I subtract the 50 over, so it's going to be negative 30y equals negative 180. Dividing by a negative 30, make sure we divide by a negative 30, y equals 6. So now I have two of my three solutions. Well, now we have an x and a y, so we no longer can use these guys. We have to go back to our beginning equations and then solve for z. And again, I'm going to use the red equation, but you don't have to use the red equation. You could have used the black or the purple equation. So I'm going to start plugging things in here. I have 2 times, what was x? Negative 2. And then plus 6 for y minus z equals 5. Simplify. Negative 4 plus 6 minus z equals 5. Then we have a 2 minus z equals 5, subtract it over, negative z equals 3, and then z equals a negative 3. So now we have our three solutions. We have our three variables, all right? So we will have to solve for three variables. And be very careful because there's a lot of work going on, and even the smallest mistake with not carrying a negative or combining the wrong things will screw up our answer. So just be very careful, very mindful of what we're doing. Let's try another one with number two. Here we go. Again, I look for a single variable. I see a single variable with an x in my red equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the black equation, and then I'm going to subtract. Well, I'm going to take this guy times two. So I'm going to subtract. Uh, 2 times the red equation, or multiply this guy by a negative 2. So when we do that, we come up with this for our two equations. So now I'm going to simplify. Well, at 2x minus 2x, that's 0, so I'm not going to do anything with that. I have negative 3y plus 5z, and then that equals a negative 9. So now we did the first two, the black and the red. Now we have to do the red and the purple. So now I'm going to take the purple guy, and I'm going to subtract. Now instead of taking it times negative 2, I'm going to take it times negative 6. So it's going to be minus 6r, or minus 6 times the red equation. So now here's my two new equations. Now we add these up. So, again, my x's cancel out. I'm going to be left with a negative 9y, a plus 15z, and that's going to equal a negative 27. Now, I want to eliminate one more variable. 
So I'm going to look at this equation. How can I match up my y's? Well, if I took this guy times 3, that would match up my y's, but I want to eliminate my y's. So I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3. Again, you're multiplying everything in there by a negative 3. So now my blue guy turns into this equation, and I still have my red equation. So let's simplify this. 9y minus 9y is 0, okay? 15z, negative 15z and positive 15z is 0, and that's going to equal 0. Uh-oh, does 0 equal 0? Is that true? Yes, it is true, but now only because we took and simplified one variable, we got rid of one variable, and we found out that when we were simplifying for two variables that it equaled 0, 0, this is going to be infinite, right? Because we already applied infinite solutions. We already applied elimination to get rid of one variable. So when we were solving for two variables, right, it came out to be 0, 0. Therefore, since 0, 0 equals 0, 0, since it's true, we have infinite solutions. Let's try one more. Hang in there. Here we go. Now we look at this guy. Well, what's that single variable? Here I spotted my single, single variable, and that's going to be the negative y. So now I'm going to start with this purple guy just to mix things up. So I'm going to take the purple guy, and I'm going to subtract. What do I have to multiply to match my 3y? I have to multiply it times 3, or since we're subtracting, I'm going to make it a negative 3, so it's going to be the opposite signs. So now it's going to be a minus 3b. I'm taking the 3 times the black equation, which is going to give us this. We have 9x minus 3y minus e equals 12, and then it's a negative 9x, a plus now because it's a negative, plus 3y minus 6z equals a negative 12. So here we simplify. This is 0, this is 0, this is 0, so everything 0, uh-oh, equals 0. Hmm, that's interesting because 0 equals 0 is infinite solutions. But we only have worked with so far two of the three systems. We need to work with all three systems before we can conclude that it's infinite solutions. So let's work with the red and the black equation again. This is my y is what I'm working with, trying to cancel out. So what do I have to take times the black equation to match the red equation? I'm going to take the black guy now, not times negative 3. How can I match up with this uh, 2 for my red equation is 2. Now we want it to be the opposite sign, so I'm going to take it times negative 2. Or I'm going to have the red equation minus 2 times the black equation. So I get this. Now I'm just going to add my signs because I changed all my signs so now I just can add going down. So 6x minus 6x, that's 0. Negative 2y plus 2y, that's also 0. And 4z, or a negative 4z plus 4z is 0. They're all 0, so it looks like we're on a good start to infinite solutions. But hold the phone, we have 11 minus 8, which is 3. Does 0 equal 3? No, it does not. So this is not true. Even if this is true, this is not true, meaning that we do not have a solution. So we have no solution. So make sure, even if you get something right away that has 0 equals 0 or the same number equaling the same number, you have to try the other equation to make sure that it's true for the other one. All right, so make sure you test all three of them. But that does it for section 3.4, systems of equations in three variables. Good day.